Hello folks, my name is Matthew Peterson, a trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and as you saw in our intro video, uh, we do a lot of things from on-demand learning to private training, public trainings, hackathons, VMs, uh, and we have this wonderful YouTube channel. So if this is your first time here, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, so you can stay up to date of all notifications of all videos we post, which is normally two to three a month covering Power Platform, Azure, SQL, we do it all here. So in this video, this is my 11th episode of my Power Platform series, and we're going to head back into a Canvas application. I want to show you something that came up in one of my hackathons last week where we created an app for a check-in for these individual IT techs who are going to different schools. They wanted to check in and then check out and then check into a new location, but they wanted the mileage from one location to the next to be logged so that they could be reimbursed for that mileage. So in order to do this, we had to go into use a Bing Maps connector, which in the description below, I'm gonna uh, take you to a blog that walks you through the steps of how to set up this free connector within your Power Apps environment. So without any further ado, let's see how we can use Bing Maps connector to get mileage distance calculated for a driving route. So just in case this is ever something you need in one of your applications. So here's what we've got so far, just a blank screen right here. And what I'm gonna do first is to show you that over on my data section, this is the connector that I have. This being, whoop, okay, right over here, this being Maps connector. All right, so you have to make that connection by going into Add Data, and again, in the description below, I, it walks you through how to set this connector up. So now that I have it, there's a few different ways of how we can use this. So in, in that application, we actually had all the addresses stored in a separate table for the different site locations they were going to. For here though, just to get this nitty, quick and gritty kind of idea of how it's done, we're gonna manually put in the addresses into two text inputs, and then we're gonna have the mileage calculated for us in a label. But again, once you have this set up, you can start to hook this into your real live data, put this into a form, and start to capture this number to write back to the data source. So here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and I am going to put in a text label. And this text label is going to be used to calculate our mileage, where we're going to display it. So I'm just going to change this over to mileage, and we'll put in the actual formula here in just a few moments. Now what I need to do is give my users some places to put in their different destinations. So I have these called text input, text input one and two, actually four and two here. So I'm going to rename these. So I'm gonna call this INP uh, start, and the other one I'm gonna call this do, 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 INP end. All right, so the other things I'll probably do here instead of start, I'll come over, I'm gonna get rid of the default value because we don't want that there because it's gonna supposed to be an address when we're done. So for my hint text, I'm gonna put starting destination. So starting destination. And then for this one, this is our end. So I'm gonna get rid of the default and put in my hint text of ending destination. All right, so now for the mileage, this is where all the magic happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concatenate and now I'm gonna use my Bing connector here. So I'm gonna start off with, and let me zoom on in. We're gonna start off with Bing Maps. That is the connector we're using. And this is going to be get route. So there's a whole bunch of other things to take a look at here. And I'm going to use the newest version, version three. So the first thing it wants to know is this route that we're getting, should I calculate it based on like transit, driving, or walking? So we're going to go with driving here. So once we have in our driving, as we can see, the next thing we do to get to our next parameter is we need our, our specified starting point. So this can be a landmark or an address. And the beautiful thing to note here, for the most part, the way that you format your addresses with commas or state abbreviations, um, however many extra spaces you have, we didn't really notice much change at all for how we put the addresses in. So it is pretty forgiving here in terms of the way you format your addresses. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna use one of my inputs. So I'm gonna say input start dot, and what do I want from here? I want the text. But again, if this was a dropdown, like with all the different addresses or locations, we would reference our drop our dropdown dot selected text. And then if it's a record, we would say we want the address from that record. Or if it was just simply an address column, then we could go with just our selected text there. 
So once I have this in here, we have our input for the start. So then I'm going to go comma. Now I need the input for the end. So we're going to go input end dot text. So now I'm giving it the starting location and the ending location. So now we're going to come back on over into the comma. And so now there's a few different options here that we can, we can look here, avoiding different things. But really what I want is the distance unit. So I'm going to select the distance unit. All right, once I have in the distance unit, the next thing I now have to do is say, how do I want the distance unit to be um, calculated? So with here, I want it calculated in terms of miles. And there it was right there, so distance unit, and I want it in terms of miles. Then I'm gonna close that off. So now we know how to get this done. And so right now, what this is going to return for me is if I close this off, this is now going to be a record. Well, I'm doing a text label, so I wanna know what do we want from this record. So anytime you, you're writing a formula, you're never quite sure what to do next if it's a brand new formula for you, my magic button to try to help guide me to the next step, especially in time it returns a record, this is what you always do, but just put in a period. For any formulas you're just new to, you're like, I don't know what to do next, put that period in and see if it helps you out. So I'm gonna put in a dot here. And so now the next thing I want to return is I actually want to return the distance unit itself. But notice there's a lot of different things. Actually, you know what I want? I'm sorry, I want, I got the distance units the mile. I want the travel distance. So I'm gonna go with travel distance here. So now when I come back in here, it's gonna say mileage. Don't worry about this red X, it's a runtime issue right now because we're in the we're in preview uh, mode of this. But when you play the app, you're not gonna have any of these issues that you're seeing here. So I'm gonna come on over here and hit play. So now, starting destination. Uh, let's use something that everyone knows about, the White House. So I'll go 1600 Pennsylvania, make sure I spell this one correctly, Avenue, Northwest, Washington, DC, and then I'll put in the zip code 200500. All right, for my ending destination, I'm just gonna use our work address here. So 7175, US 17, and then we are located in Fleming Island, Florida, 32003. And then here is our mileage. That is the mileage, and I did look it up on Bing, and it does, again, it's, so these might not be your official mileage route, so if, the, if you're not okay with the Bing calculating it, then you, know, you couldn't really go with this route here. Um, but that is it. Now, a few things we could do to make this, you know, a little, not maybe not a little bit better, but you could always put in like conditional logic. So for this text label, if you didn't want it, for example, let's just actually do it instead of just talking about it. So I'm going to close out of here. And again, don't worry about this. You won't get this in the play mode. But I could come to this text label and say something like to my users, I could put an if condition in here. So I'm going to come up to the front here and I'm going to say something like the following. I'm going to say if and I'm going to do an is blank and I'm going to check one of my inputs here, input start. So I'm going to say if is blank input start or, so I put in the double pipe delimiter here, or I'll go is blank input end like so. So if either one of those text inputs are blank, we could give a, a message in our label that says something like uh, a location is missing for mileage. So I'll go location is missing for mileage. So if any of those are blank, show that in our label. If not, then do the calculation of the, um, the Bing Maps connector. So I need one more parentheses out here to close off my if statement. So now when I come back in and play my application, and if I were to get rid of any one of these, it's going to say missing for mileage. And again, I would just make that text label a little bit larger here. Location is missing for mileage. Now if I go back in and I put in that address again, now I get my mileage here. And again, you know, I would format that to make sure it fits out picture perfect. So this is one way of how you can use the Bing Maps connector. It is a free connection. You do have to generate an, uh, an API, a token for that API. But again, if you look in the description of the video, I walk you through how to do that. 
So hopefully you found something out new that maybe you didn't know that Power Apps could do for you. Uh, we can calculate mileage. There's a lot of other things that the Bing Maps connector can do for you. Uh, and hopefully in the future I'll be able to bring you some more of those videos to give you some other offshoots. But something that came up in one of my hackathons last week and I'm like, let me show this out to other people who maybe haven't seen it. So if you like the video, make sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.